single separated alone lonely wolves let's talk now i would like you to consider this one thing if you just look at your own life at the moment with a different perspective i guarantee you will feel so much more better you see all around people around you you know there's this hustle culture there's a struggle and it makes you all think a certain way in a similar way you know that you're supposed to do nine to five you're supposed to do this you're supposed to have two jobs and you're supposed to have a family and you're supposed to have kids by this age you're supposed to have a boyfriend by this age you're supposed to have a fiance by this age and you know the list goes on for example you look at social media and all you see is people kind of rubbing in your face all of their uh, material possessions as well as their relationships right a good chunk of people that watch those things and they feel sad they despise they're jealous they're envious you know and it's like they have no hope to have that and so they look at you in an evil way evil eyes and because that hustle and in your face culture is so common it's actually maybe making you feel way more lonelier than you actually are even introverts feel the need sometimes to do this on a certain time have this on a certain time but at the same time don't have the courage for those social skills or you know being all out there 24 7 and still have all the energy you know they have to like recoup and just get back into their own shell before they can you know get out there again it always puts so much pressure on them because they see everybody else doing this on social media and you know then you have your friends calling hey i'm going out with that friend how are you hope you're doing well have a good time at home with your mommy so it's always like in your face and that is why it makes you feel way more lonelier in this age nowadays today than it used to be ever before. And then so you kind of feel like, ugh, I'm not doing all of that. So maybe I'm lacking something. So maybe I'm, be I'm too behind. Maybe I have failed, you know, I have failed. Maybe I have disappointed. Maybe I couldn't do as much anymore. And I think everybody else is just so much more better than me. And I think a lot of introverts will feel that way. You feel exhausted and you know how much capacity you have. But at the same time, you feel like you want to push yourself because it's so normal to just be in your face. And so that kind of pressure and that kind of burden makes you feel even more lonelier than you really are. And here's the difference, by the way. You feeling lonely is a problem. You being alone is not a problem. Does that make sense? What you see being normalized is probably not your internal norm. And so you want to belong to the norm. So you try to do things a little differently. The problem is not you being alone. The problem is you feeling lonely. If you're thinking, the worst thing that can happen to me in my life will be that I'll be left all alone. That's really not a problem. No problem. You have yourself. Wherever you go, you will take yourself with you you're fine and you are a lot of things you have your emotional well-being you're going to take with you you have your consciousness you're going to take with you you are a spirit you are this body you are you. you you come with all the skills and the game and you come with so much knowledge and wisdom you are a lot of things and wherever you go you're going to take yourself with all of it with you so you're not really ever lonely lonely but you feel like it because of your surroundings the worst thing actually that can happen to you is that being surrounded by people and now you actually feel lonely because now this is strange now you have people why would you feel lonely now if you still do chances are those are not the right kind of people that you have surrounded yourself with and it happens more than we are willing to accept that many people come from dysfunctional families and especially now we live in the we live in the west in the west you see this so much more it's, it's just so common and we see so much dysfunctionality between parent-child relationship or sibling relationships and all of that so it's not just within the family it's also the relatives and then and then uh, because of those childhood traumas and the problems and the abandonment issues and the doll syndrome all of these things combined together now lead you into uh, a relationship with an adult who is also toxic you know because we tend to always you know go towards things that are very familiar to us and what is familiar to you is something you've had in the past within your family dynamics. So when you come from toxicity and stuff like this, you will always be going towards a similar kind of thing because we always go for things or people that feel similar. They feel like, ooh, I'm at home. But what was your home? Oops, home was the problem. Home was 
where you had everybody everybody was alive but yet there was no good relationship but yet there was no father mother uh, figure in your life or maybe if maybe if you come from a family where your parents have passed away then you may be not very familiar with feeling of having a, a guide with you or a mother figure a female you know or a male figure in your life you're probably not aware of those things what will home feel to you now when you go for a grown ass person home will feel a little bit empty oh it was a little empty oh it was dark oh it was lonely oh it was unaccepting or oh it was abusive and loud and aggressive and you will most likely go for the same person when you grow up also because that feels like home because there is so much familiarity here this is a mistake we often do especially if you're somebody who comes from a dysfunctional families with a lot of toxicity and just twisted dynamics between uh, parent uh, son parent daughter or even with your siblings then you better be way more cautious than anybody else to not seek for the feeling of too much familiarity again chances are the familiarity was not healthy in the first place you don't want that kind of familiarity so you heal yourself you work on yourself and you go for something that feels ah new refreshing amazing Let's work with this. Let's see where this goes. And coming back to the subject of loneliness. Again, if you go for the thing that is familiar, you dig yourself a bigger hole because now you set yourself up for a lifelong of loneliness. You're going to keep choosing people that are familiar, familiar, familiar. And yet you're always still feeling lonely and there's always something you're searching for, but you just never tend to get it because you're always looking for familiarity. Stop looking for familiarity. You know, you can't go for something toxic and then be surprised, why do I feel so lonely? Of course you're gonna be. If you are sitting here and keep saying, I want this in a person, I want that, and this goes for men and women both. I want this in a person, I want this in a person, I want this in a friend, I want this in a friend and stuff like that. And then it's like, okay, all right, wait a minute. Are you the reciprocal of that? Is that a good match? Does it like fit like a puzzle? Oh, if it doesn't, you got work to do. You have work to do. You can't ask for something you're not even ready for. How do you become ready for it? You become the reciprocal of that. You don't look for familiarity. You look for, okay, this, 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 this is what I want. Now let me become the reciprocal of that. And then you do your work on yourself. And that work is not going to get done until and unless you don't completely flush out this feeling and this fear. Oh my God, I'm always going to be lonely. No, that has to leave your system. 